Okay. So now I want to make a bass line. I don't want to make it in this pattern because this pattern is the drum loop. I don't want to make it in here. So now we want to go to a new pattern. And like everything else, there are a lot of ways to do that. We can either go all the way up here to the pattern selector and just click and drag until it says pattern two. And now we're on pattern two where there is nothing. Here's pattern one and pattern two. Could right click it and we get the pattern options menu where we can name something. There's also a couple options here. We have find first empty, find next empty, insert one, clone, delete, move up, move down, split, split by channel. This is where actually it'll make a new pattern for every single channel in here. So it would make four new patterns that represent the individual content of each individual channel. That's if you want to get really special uh, in the in the playlist. And I'll show you how, how, kind of what that looks like later. Well, let's go to find first empty. Pattern two. And it'll prompt me to name it. So I'm going to call it baseline line. All right. I'm however in the drums channel. So I'm going to go to unsorted where I add a new channel. Now we were, we had just added, added sample channels. Now we do, we don't want to have a sample channel to make a uh, sort of melodic content. We could do that. You could just have a recording of a baseline, or you could even just have a one shot, a uh, single note bass sample and then pitch it up and down to make your baseline. You could do that, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that today. First, we're going to add a synth. Now there is actually more ways of doing this than there are the samples, sample, sample idea. The first way that I, that I kind of quote unquote grew up using was going to channels, add one, and then you have your list of stuff you can use. You're not limited to just FL stuff. This is also where VSTs go when you plug them in there. So you have I have Native Instruments Massive, I have FM8, and I also have Steve Duda's Serum, including the 64 version, which you can use in FL. There there is a 64 bit version of FL and a 32 bit version of FL. You can use 32 bit plugins in the 32 bit version and also 64 bit plugins in the 64 bit version. You would just have to bridge them, and the bridger is pretty stable. It works out pretty good. In the 64-bit version, you can use 64-bit uh, plugins natively, and then you can bridge 32-bit plugins. So that's very handy. I'm going to add one of the free plugins, one of the plugins that comes with FL. I'm going to add GMS. I'm not going to worry too much about ex like experimental sound design in this series. I'm just going to get us starting going with something. So I'm going to go into presets and find some reasonable bass sample for us to for us to just have I don't see chunk what does that sound like now here's a question how do we make anything make sound we could put a, uh, a node in the sample but that's just going to play C5 which works but if we want to do anything that's not C5 we're kind of it's not going to work out so well our other option is we can go straight into the piano roll but also, I want to point out that uh, even synth channels have a channel settings window. And the plugin window gets us an actual keyboard. C5 ended up being pretty good. So that's how, that's how we were able to do that kind of thing. Now, uh... Yeah, the keyboard piano. But I want to go to the piano roll so that I can actually write a bass line. So there's a couple of ways of, do, of doing this. Um, one of the ways is you can click on the piano roll itself, and then it'll probably already be in, actually, by, by probably, I mean definitely. If you have something selected and you go to the piano roll, it's going to go to the piano roll of that thing you have selected. Uh, if it doesn't, you can actually go up to the piano roll, and there's a big list of, uh, of all the plugins you have. So we have... Here's all the all the drums that we have earlier, and here's as you can see it's 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 broken up into the groups. So right now we have GMS. If you don't want to do that, you can also right click on the thing and, and just click on piano roll, and then it'll go there. So now we have the piano roll. You just saw that I zoomed, and I did that by hitting Control and scrolling. You can also zoom by grabbing the edge of the, the scroll bar and zooming. You can zoom vertically by grabbing this object up here and zooming. There are other types of piano roll sort of modes up here. There's only these two for um, what we're doing right now. But if I would, there's other modes, there's other like objects that have different kinds of piano roll uh, views. We'll talk about those later. 
this is I, I prefer this particular view. Um, I I actually don't remember if FL has these helpers on by default. If they don't, you can go down the drop down menu, click on helpers, and uh, you want note grid highlights. If you don't have it on, it looks like this, which is not necessarily bad, but I prefer the note grid highlights because it makes it easier for me to, to work on something over here, and I can see you know the the black key white key relationship, and I can more easily tell what note I'm doing, and that's why I like that. So let's run a baseline. Uh, to put down notes, you click on you click on the space and it creates a note. To delete notes, you right click on it and it deletes notes. I'm using the pencil tool. And what this does is when I put down a note, I, I have it and I can drag it around. There's another another thing you can do is if you hold down shift and put down a note, it'll put down a note, but then you can tell it how long you want it to be right then and there. As opposed to the normal way of doing things, which is once you have a note, every note afterwards is going to be that particular length. Either way, it works fine for me. Once you have a note down, you can change its length by just grabbing the side of it. If you click on it, move it up and down. You can even double click on it to get various note properties. And these are all various sort of MIDI parameters like panning, velocity, and release, and mod X and Y, and pitch. Mod X and Y are actually not MIDI. This is a um, FL proprietary signal that works with plugins that have a XY window. Which, as you see here, this does. So if I was if I was using a, a filter, for example, in here, and I can control X and Y actually per note inside the piano roll. But that's a bit advanced, and we're not going to do that right now. So let's make some kind of bass line. This orange line that we're seeing here is actually a special setting in the playlist. I believe that's in here. Yes, precise time indicator. That's what that was. Without it on, that's what that looks like. It shows you what uh, particular cell it's in, depending on your zoom. But I like precise precise time indicator. I like to use the space bar to, to, to play and stop. It's just um, easier for me to do that kind of thing. I think I'm going to... Sure, that's fine. Now that we have this, let's actually mess around with uh, the GMS to find a preset that's, that we like better, because I'm, I'm not a huge fan of this. Okay, I'm okay with that. We have a baseline. Now, note that uh, we actually uh, the the view of what the note what the sequencer is now shows you the piano roll instead of the sequencing because we're using the piano roll in this pattern. Indeed. So now, uh, the next video, I'm going to create a chord progression by using using this baseline that we have now we have now made. We'll, we'll make a third a third pattern uh, with a new synth. Yes. Do I not have? Oh, I don't. Okay, ignore that. I'll address that later. <laughs> 